Krishna. Um, thank you for inviting me tonight. <laughs> so yeah, thank you also to uh, Naho-san for uh, translating tonight. What <laughs> First presentation, so uh, I'll take it slowly. I'll take it calmly. But uh, this was written today, so I apologize in advance for anything that I skip. Uh, so, first of all, I'm going to do a quick introduction of myself. And um, then, following on, I've received some questions which uh, I will answer tonight. So uh, I work for a group called Platform Engineering in Sydney. Uh, we have five engineers in Sydney and two engineers in Amsterdam. We only work with our internal Atlassian systems. And uh, we work with most of the internal Atlassian suite of products, which you can see here, of course. So Bitbucket, of course, was mentioned tonight. Um, but we work with, um, we, don't, we don't specialize in any one particular thing. We gener um, generalize on uh, all the software. えっと、今ここにある表示されているアトラシアの製品全体を見ています。で、先ほどあのお話ししてくださったビットバケットについても、えっと、管理しています。ただ、一つ一つ、あの、一つ一つの製品について専門的に取り扱っているというわけではなく
of which platform engineering that I'm part of is one. And apart from that, we've got service operations and service reliability. These um these groups deal with internal systems, not not customer systems. Uh, so I'm going to be concentrating mainly on this group here, but um, actually I'm going to be mentioning uh, some of the questions relate to all three, so I'm going to do my best. Okay, so question one. Oh, okay. You can, I think people can read, but you can probably repeat. Okay, well. So, number of servers uh, we run on VMware and AWS. So, internally, we have 450 VMs running on VMware and 400 EC2 and the RDS instances all running Ubuntu. Okay, and new instances our group uh, creates what we call snowflakes. Which we, <laughs> so what we basically do is we make systems based on what anyone in the company wants. So uh, if they have a specific requirement, we can make that for them. So most of our process is partly manual, partly automated, but we tend to try to do anything we can to please people. <laughs> Mm, it's um, sometimes hard to say no, but it's easy to say yes. <laughs> so, question two. So, infrastructure as a code. Um, Basically, what this is getting at is how do we roll the systems out quickly and efficiently? Uh, I guess the answer is we'd like to do it more quickly and more easily, but at this stage, there's still a manual process mixed with some automation, but we'd like to do much more. So we now, um, the way we roll out most of our systems at the moment, and given that this is on a per request basis, um, we use Puppet for uh, pushing out um, most of the changes on our operating system. And we commit everything in the Puppet code to Bitbucket server. So I think the thing to take away from this is 
because every request is individual and we mold it, um, this is an example here of a particular system with some monitoring, the particular uh, monitoring requirements. And beyond here is pretty much the specific parts of the system that we would like to add. Um, uh, this particular system, we've had this running for about four years now, and our group is definitely looking to automate and simplify it, but at the moment it's actually quite a complex system. So our current pro um, provisioning process is that we would get a request through to build a particular system. We do this by altering or adding puppet code and we commit this to Bitbucket. But the good thing about this is that we, even though there are a lot of systems, we can see which system has what. We can look through all the history of the code and we can have many people working at once on our configuration. One other benefit is that we can get other non-sysadmins to do a pull request to say, please, can you commit this code to assist us with a change on a system? Puppet is running all the time and it's pulling from Bitbucket and it's running on all the systems to ensure consistency with configuration. With every change we do, we do a test, staging, production change. So we would validate the change in staging and ensure that that would be a good change in production as well. So how do we manage configuration files? Um, well, previously everything was in Puppet and we would try to manage even the application and application configuration in Puppet. But we found that with configuration change with Jira, with Confluence and any of our products, that Puppet actually made the task slow. Uh, 
ジラとかトンプの設定においてポケットを使っていると実際のところあの作業が遅くなっているかもしれないということにあとで気づきました。So what we've tended to do now is we separate the configuration to Ubuntu is managed by Puppet, which would include user、um, sudo files, host files, anything that we consider operating system is in Puppet. えっと、その後、何をし始めたかというと、えー、オペレーションシステムの管理とアプリケーションの管理を、えー、全く別にするようになりました。で、Ubuntu、このオペレーションシステムの管理についてはパペットで行って、まあ、主に、えー、ユーザー管理だったり、ホストファイルなんかは、えーと Ubuntu でね、for application,、um, for our Jira and Confluence,、uh, we are moving everything to our own Bamboo. This,、uh, we've been running on this now, and unfortunately, we've been slow to actually migrate.、Uh, the last two months, it's been extremely easy for upgrades and configuration changes. バンブーで管理するようにバンブーでっていうか自なんですけどあのバンブーで最近管理するようになってこれを使うことでアップグレードがだいぶ簡単になりました But、uh, with any as I said before with snowflakes there are some things that we need to still maintain configuration wise and Puppet does a very good job of ensuring that configuration always remains on the system is not altered. So, configuration on a daily basis,、uh, how do we actually get this done? We would get a request through Jira Service Desk. But we would also make our change in Jira Service Desk and link commits, pull requests, and all related tickets. And because we can commit everything to Bitbucket and use pull requests, we can have many people peer review the change. So sometimes for big 